Hello. Good evening, dear customers. Welcome on behalf of Crossword Bookstores and Harper Collins. Anyone who is here for Amish, obviously everyone is here for Amish's book signing, and we all are eagerly waiting. So request to kindly collect the tokens near the entrance. Anyone who has not collected the tokens for entrance, this is for the book signing later. We would be calling out as per the numbers of the tokens. So request everyone to collect the tokens at the entrance. <laughs> Or super hit book. Always, I think what happens with an Amish book is that you read it and suddenly you get very desperate. Ki, where is the next one? <laughs> Not only is it descriptive, it's imaginative, but it's just sheer brilliance. I wish that uh, there are many more amongst you that will be inspired by today and this evening and indeed by Amish Tripathi. He takes on mythology by the core and really um, you know, present, re represents us and presents us to, in a way that we haven't seen before. The celebrity author but one of the most influential voices of our times. It's that kind of a book that could interest my daughter and me at the same time. Arguably the best selling Indian author of all time. You know, I've been going through your new book, Ravan. This is possibly to my mind the most fascinating of the books that you've written so far. What we are seeing today, a publishing phenomenon, nothing less. No, Amish is India's first literary pop star. The writer of the fastest and the second fastest selling book series in Indian publishing history. Readers of all genders, communities and backgrounds, from young to old, have loved his books. Critics have said that his books are backed by tremendous research, deep thought, a rooted pride in India and a liberal progressive outlook. It's no wonder that his fan following has reached heights unheard of before for an Indian author. Ten best-selling books, six million copies sold, and the journey continues. Adding to his already full cap of feathers, Amish became a diplomat in 2019, taking Indian culture to foreign lands as the director of the Nehru Center in London. He is also Minister Culture at the Indian High Commission to the UK. And now, in a tryst with the camera, Amish has recently made his debut as a TV documentary host in the highly acclaimed Legends of the Ramayan on Discovery TV. There are many more documentaries to follow. Amish, an author, diplomat, TV documentary host, movie producer, and most importantly, a proud Indian. excited about today yeah. are you guys excited about today yeah. okay we, we we know what's going on we've been waiting for this book for a long time 
We've been waiting. We've read all his books. We've read it maybe twice. Now we've bi-hearted it. And because of that, I have some questions. We have to change all of them again. I have to go deeper into those questions and maybe find out who has published what book in what edition and maybe give away some prize. Do you guys want to win prizes or no? Yeah, yeah, yeah we've got some for you guys. But, but, before we unveil the prizes and everything else, we've got to get the man himself. We have to get the man himself, yes or no? Yes. And to get the man himself, we have to make some noise or no? First, let's remember the chant of today. It's war off! War off! War off! War off! Well, we're going to get this rhythm even harder. Please help me in welcoming to the stage Arthur Fernandez and his drum circle. Thank you. Thank you so much, everyone. Good evening, everyone. Good evening, everyone. Good evening, everyone. Can't hear you. Good evening, everyone. Everyone, ah, now I can hear you all. All right. Now, the reason why I've been invited here is because Amish is crazy and I am crazy. And both of us, when we join together, the craziness levels just goes ridiculously high. All right. Now, what we're going to do today is something that is not done in a book launch. Okay. We are going to be preparing ourselves to drum into the book launch and we're gonna have Amish also join all of us at the book launch all right does that sound good does that sound good all right now you don't need to have any sort of musical background or knowledge to be a part of this session okay so whether you play the drums or no don't care be mad wild and crazy as much as you can let's start preparing for the march towards the war, all right? So could we have the drums distributed into the audience, please? All right, let's have the drums distributed into the audience. We've got a few drums and percussion, like the tambourines and legions. The rest of the guys, all of us are going to be involved with claps, screams, and shouts, okay? So everyone with the drums, And let's start to warm up, okay? Let's start to warm up. Everyone with the instruments. So you have tambourines and legions. This is, a, this is an absolutely cracked book launch, okay? It's cracked, mad, and crazy. Very, very crazy. And that's what we're going to experience here. Okay? Everyone's got the drums? All right. Now the drummers. Drummers. I want to hear you. The drummers. Ah, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Now the percussion are the tambourines and legions. I want to hear you. Make some noise. Make some noise. Whack. Yeah. Louder, louder, louder. Louder. Okay. Where are the legions? Where are the legions? The rod, the wooden rod. Okay. One is there. Where are the legions? Okay. You all are the percussion. Okay. All right. The drummers, hold your drum this way. Okay. Drummers, raise your right hand. Raise your right hand, keep it very flat, okay? Now you see the center of the drum? It's called the base of your drum. Now you hold the drum this way, not too high, not too low. Just about this way. Go a little further from your seat so that you can hold it, all right? Now, let's play the base of the drum. Put your hand flat, let it bounce off and make a sound like... Good, together! Together, go! Oh, yeah. Good. Good. Yeah. Good. All right. Percussion. Tambourine. Legion. Oh. Oh, sweet. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Yeah. Three, 
Okay. Now the drummers again, raise your left hand. Okay? Now you see the side of the drum is called the frame of the drum. Gives you a different tone. Okay? Now when you whack the drum, let it give a different tone like... Okay? Together. Good. Yeah. Yeah. Good. All right. Percussion. Good. Oh, yeah. Oh, bad. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Good. Yeah, man. Yeah. Good. I want the claps. I want your claps. Go. Go. Oh, yeah. Good. Good. Yeah. Yeah. Go. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Whack the drum. Make some noise. Make some noise. Yeah. Make some noise. Yeah. 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 One, two, three, four, and stop! Wow, give yourselves a big hand, man! Wow! <laughs> you all are preparing really well for the war. Okay? Now let's start to play a beat, okay? Drummers, raise your right hand. Okay? Let's call a right hand number one. Now raise your left hand. Let's call a left hand number two. Right hand number one, left hand number two. Right goes to the center, left goes to the side, okay? Now the beat is gonna go like one, two, 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 one, go! One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, good one, two, one, good one, two, one, two, one, go! Yeah! Percussion, tambourine, play gym, go! Yeah, man! gonna do let's give a little change in the beat okay and I want to hear you all now use your vocal cords okay our next beat is going to be a fruit salad okay now let's say the beat okay this is only for a warm-up our main drumming is gonna start after this beat okay the next beat is gonna be watermelon ice cream watermelon ice cream watermelon ice cream say it go Watermelon ice cream. Watermelon ice cream. Watermelon ice cream. 
watermelon ice cream. Cut! 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 Yeah! Cut! One, two, three, four, and stop! Two, three, play! That's a very big hand, man. Wow. Wow. All right. Now, we are all good with that little drumming that we just did. Let's start to now prepare for war. Do you know what the book is called? Can't hear you. All right. Let's prepare for war. Okay? We all have to prepare for war with drumming, screaming, shouts, and claps. Are we all good to do that? Are we all good to do that? Yeah. Can you? Yeah. All right. Now this is what we are going to do, okay? Let's start to play one, two, one, two again. All right? Very good eye contact, everyone. Very good eye contact. We all look at each other, okay? Let's start to play one, two, one, two again. All right? One, two, three. Go and oh man and clap 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 and clap yeah clap good oh yeah yeah man.
Zombies to join us. Yeah? Would you like it? Would you like him? Yeah? 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 Watch out, Diga! Drummer done his Trinity College in drumming. 
and he's absolutely amazing. Give him a big hand for Deal. <laughs> and for our man of the night, Amish Tripathi. <laughs> everyone. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you so much, everyone. Yes, but, but let's put our hands together for the man who brought up the biggest crescendo of the evening. <laughs> Make some noise for her. Arthur Fernandez, please! Right. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. That was heartbeat. That was rage. That was love. That was passion. That was the drum circle, bro. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Make some noise for you! Oh, yeah! <laughs> this guy would be the chief, chief driver of it. <laughs> Ah, oh, tell my yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. And yes, I have to thank Harshad, my percussionist. He's amazing. Yeah. Thank you. Harshad, thank you so much. Thank you so much, everyone. You all have been an amazing audience. And the reason why you all are here, because everyone is as cracked as Amish. <laughs> That's why you all connect so well with his book. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you. To Arthur and Arshad, everyone, and the drop circle, and you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. Yeah. Okay. Ah, take a breath. Yeah. I don't get a mic. Where is it? <laughs> Arthur's left you speechless. Correct. It's my book. I mean, I deserve a mic. You said enough in seven books. <laughs> seven books. <laughs> and that also non-fiction. Uh, fiction. And three more in non-fiction. Or kitna? I had, I had told Gavin this. He's done the, uh, the launches for most of my books. And one of my books, I'd written an uh, inscription for him that there's only one Gavin. Thank God. <laughs> That's a fantastic memory. I didn't want to tell people that. But yes, that's only me. And shall always be. And I'm very, very thankful that I'm a part of your life. And you are actually a part of my life. So thank you, Amish. Okay. But let's talk about that very important person in your life who has, who you're dedicating this book to. Yes. The, the source of power, inspiration, and love to your father. Late Mr. V.K. Tripathi. As we cue videos, uh, can I ask and request everyone to please pass the drums, tambourines, and any percussion instruments down towards the volunteers as they collect it. And while that's happening, I'd like to read this dedication. Uh, this is from the beginning of my book. I'm assuming everyone's going to take a book from here. Uh, Buy, 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 buy. I did request Crossword and Harper to distribute it free, but they have some business contingencies or something, <laughs> so you have to buy it. Man. Sorry, man. Uh, I'm going to read this dedication uh, to my late father, VK Tripathi, and to my young son, Neil. You got to remember, he shot up a lot in the last six months, so when I wrote this, he was uh, shorter. So I did reach <laughs> down to him at that time. So, okay. <clears throat> To my father, the late V.K. Tripathi, and to my young son, Neil. I used to reach up and hold his hand to learn how to walk. I reach down to embrace him, for it makes my heart sore. I used to ask him questions, for he schooled me best. I gave him books to read, to expand his horizons. I strove to make my father proud of me. I strive to be worthy of emulation to my son. Blessed am I with among the most sacred of bonds, with stretches across generations, the one with my father, the one with my son. And the soul will forever reverberate with these beautiful words. When a father told his son, I'm proud of you, my boy, always was, always will be. And a son told his father, I love you, dad. Always have and always will. This for my dad, the late BK Tripathi, and my boy Neil out there. 
And now Gavin has the floor. Well, with you on it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but we, we are going to invite somebody more special to join you on stage. And somebody more prettier, more pretty than the both of us combined. That, well, okay, fine. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, you may have not seen her often, but you have definitely heard her voice. She has graced the screen, but in different avatars. 12 years of Kasakai Mumbai and Barasateen and sometimes called Gara Sedo, Ashuka Show, ladies and gentlemen, one of the top beautiful voices of India, ladies and gentlemen, RJ Arjana. Do I hear you hooting, hooting, no hooting? Can we have some? With uh, Gavin's energy, we would have probably uh, never wanted to end tonight and feel energized because I haven't eaten. It's Navratri fast for me. But you seem to be on some other level of energy. It's not food related. What is it, dudes? Well, sometimes it's your grace and your beauty <laughs> and your command over your language Thanks. that enamors us. And Thank with you. this, I step off stage as you conquer it as always. Right. Thank you, Gavin. Thank oh, you. But there Arthur. are three chairs. I thought you were in here too. Yeah. No? All right. Okay. Amish, this is as up close and personal. Even in the radio station, we have a table in between us. <laughs> Guys, how excited are we that Amish is back in India? Because there's one thing that connects all of us radio jockeys in our storytelling narrative on radio, and that's the passion of the word that you engage your listener with. Uh, storytelling is all about that. And to me, Amish, you are so beautifully managing to stir the spiritual emotion of our nation by giving them a story in a very contemporary format. But need I say that you have fans across all age groups, and I don't know how you do that. And how much do we love him? Can we just say woo if we do? <laughs> this is like a big ball of heart here, and it's his birthday month. Uh, Librans are known to be loving and love emanating and love collecting. This must be so special for you to do this in your birthday month, isn't it? Yeah, actually my birthday is coming up this, uh, this it's month, 18th, 18th October. Uh, there's a person I share my birthday with, my twin brother Ashish, he's here. Uh, that's out there, that's Ashish. Oh my God, how handsome and is everybody in your house? Correct. And and my mother, Usha, is also out here, and she was stuck with the two of us. She somehow managed Namaste, us. Namaste, Mataji. You've given birth to a doll. What did you just say? I missed that. She was stuck with the two of us. She somehow managed us. <laughs> she seems to be in a calm, beautiful, grace place. Honestly, as a Libran is, they are free-flowing. They love their life to not have some sort of an agenda. And yet, you've taken on this huge task of representing the culture of our country back in London. Can I go backwards and ask you, how, how it feels like that, like Hanuman Ji had you know, uh, taken the food, which was it? No, no, I will be more Vanar Sena. You'll be more Vanar Sena? <laughs> Look, in, in London, the role that I'm doing, I'm director of the Nehru Center in London. How many of you guys have come to London or do plan to come to London in the near future? Just All of us hands. have come to London, I guess. Okay, if you guys do come, you must come to the Nehru Center. It's on South Audley Street in Mayfair. Uh, so, you've heard of the British Council in India, right? Yeah. Yeah, so the Nehru Center is the Indian British Council in the UK. Okay. Uh, and we speak of our culture out there. Uh, we uh, spread our narrative, uh, dance our dances, uh, uh, play our music, and speak of our books and speak of our uh, way of life. So, you guys must come. Whenever you come to London. So the first question out of the way. Myth or actual history? This And I think that most youngsters have that question. Has this really happened? And I'm sure this is a very frequently asked question to you as well. Yeah, yeah. Most... Uh, okay, if I ask most youngsters out here, uh, you must have heard uh, in the Valmiki Rama and Valmiki Ji had spoken of an underground river in Chitrakoot. Yeah. yeah. How many of you believe that there actually is an underground river in Chitrakoot? Okay, it's a decent number. 
the rest of you don't believe it fair enough because it hasn't been shown to you you know besides my book of course i describe some of these things in the book as well i've done a documentary for discovery tv uh, which is actually launching on tv today discovery tv's research team found that underground river okay and a geologist and i actually went and shot out there it's a river which flows underground and the water was coming up till knee or thigh level uh, we actually shot out there and this is there on tv right it was under the ocean as he said it was under the, yeah it was it was un, it was in a cavern it was underground right and so ram setu you guys must have obviously you remember the story from uh, the 1980s television serial right that there's the stone and you place it on the uh, sea and it floats how many of you guys think uh, i'm not so sure <laughs> stone floating I, i think most of us or how many of you guys think it certainly could have happened yeah okay i'm both again i actually put an explanation of that in my book of how the ram setu could have actually been built and i did this discovery tv program once again where we found stones you you or everyone knows what a coral is yeah so when corals die they apparently become rocks okay and there are those kind of rocks found only around the rameshwaram area okay and these rocks are so strong that in the modern day the portuguese used those rocks to build churches okay and you can actually go out there and see those churches and they still stand and you might feel see those boulders around they are so light that i could pick it up without getting a slip disc i'm 47 years old okay without getting a slip disc i could easily pick it up stones which are light but strong enough to hold up a structure could they have been used i i put in my interpretation of what could have been a rational scientific reason for how the ram setu the bridge was built uh that was there in the book and this is what you call a long marketing pitch you can read about it in the book does does neil neil where are you right there hi archana does neil ever question you that daddy aap kya likh rahe ho you know it's very natural for a child to take ghar ki murgi dal barabar when the whole world is considering you to be like peshawari whatever you know like yeah he he likes my book but sadly i'm not number 1 uh and there is another guy and i hate that author <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah george r r martin he likes george r r martin so damn <laughs> <laughs> but you know since this and at least at least i am a close second i think uh has he ever influenced your writing yeah in fact actually there's a new series i want to write after the ramchandra series uh, part of it is inspired by because i want to become number one in his eyes <laughs> so uh, it's set in the modern day <laughs> would i be after the ramchandra series w- would you guys agree that reading amish's book is like watching an addictive series you can't stop like binge watch like binge read <laughs> like i totally feel that and it's funny when i'm sitting cooped up in the corner in my sofa and my husband's like are you crying and i'm like yeah yeah you know like you can literally imagine those characters and those situations and then every time a movie close to this comes up everyone's busy calling me like i am supposed to know everything amish does and they don't like through google like is this amish's book is this amish's book obviously this happened to me a lot in brahmastra No, no. Brahma says not based on my. No, no. I know. I'm just saying. Since Astra and all was revived by you in many ways, I just want to know how many people do that to you because they're doing it to me. No, I've I've had some interesting things. I've I've been at traffic signals where uh, people have come and sold pirated copies of my books to me. <laughs> uh, and in fact, one of them I told them that, "Yar, ye kitab maine likhi hai." Ha ha ha. Aapko nahi khareedna hai to na bolo na. You know the cool thing about you is how you fluidly gone from being a banker to an author to a researcher to now a voice over artist like me because if you watch the series he's done a bloody good job let's clap for that because it's not easy for a writer to speak out a story he's doing the narrative himself in a way you're an anchor because obviously you're anchoring that show what are you going to be directing the movie now i mean i know you're co-producing your films yeah good idea i'm working with anish da and aman here to kind of figure out what uh, you should we are do converting next. suhail dev my one of my books into a movie uh, so yeah so actually god knows maybe i should get into direction <laughs> also aur halaki aapne abhi tak koi dharma film nahi kiye lekin dharma book likhi hai dharma book likhi hai with didi right there 
dharma Bhakari. book likh liye so let's clap for him he's somewhere around the dharma you know uh, the reason i bring up that book and i know we're going to come to war of lanka soon is because that that book is where i think the crux of this book is it's actually asking you to question as opposed to just accept stories the way they are it goes deeper into how you need yeah. to give a 360 degree view to things yeah i think the entire concept of uh, dharma is uh, to learn how to make choices and how to live your uh, live your life and uh, part of the war of lanka is how a society should be structured that's what i'm debating out here that we keep, we know what everyone all of us know what ram rajya is if you go around the country and you ask people that uh, how should a society be run almost everyone will say ram rajya right Re yeah. regardless of religion regardless of caste regardless of region regardless of language everyone will say ram rajya then you ask the second question that what is ram rajya and you'll get a thousand different answers uh, and i think that's because we as a society haven't really debated what is an ideal society uh, you know so even when we got independence did we really debate there are choices right between individualism and society focus between rule of law and justice at times rule of law and justice are in conflict right yeah. uh, like i remember when uh, you know the the rape case had happened in delhi i remember many in social media were saying we should just hang all those people straight away without a trial uh, and i kind of discussed this debate in ram sign of ikshwaku because lord ram is very clear that the law has to be followed no matter what whereas lord bharat says that the law's purpose is to serve justice and if law is not serving justice then forget the law just carry out justice and lord ram's stand is if you do that you have vigilantism you have chaos so the, i have there are arguments on both sides right but do we as a society even debate these issues and i think if we can debate this in the form of a story yeah. you know that what are the choices that we make then it's worth uh, essentially discussing like i one sees in the west individualism taken to an extreme yeah. in the western world there's there's so much atomization chaos uh and do we want to go down that direction or do we want to balance ourselves what dif differentiates india like when i go around the world i think the one thing that differentiates us from the world is our wisdom is our adherence to family as a unit and generally i think our knowledge base which is huge which we as i don't know how many of you agree with me i don't think we access the knowledge base we have and somewhere i think the books have bridged that for us um uh, what do you think separates india from the rest of the world look at at first uh, i don't know how many of you guys are aware this year our gdp crossed that of the uk everyone knows that yeah. our gdp crossed that of the uk the last time this happened was 150 years ago when queen victoria was still ruling when the british raj was running the biggest drug smuggling racket in the history of humanity You know the British Raj was essentially built on drug smuggling. Everyone knows yeah. that, right? Uh, which destroyed both India and China. Most economists say that over the next 20, 25 years, India's per capita income, on a purchasing power parity basis, will cross every individual European's per capita income. मतलब every individual Indian will earn more than every individual European on a per capita on a purchasing power parity basis. within the next 25 years guess when this happened last 900 years ago for 900 years we've been slowly declining last 200 years we declined very rapidly but all that we lost in 900 years we'll make up in just 25 right our pace of Woo! growth is fantastic applaud man everyone Woo! all indians have achieved this but the key thing we have to debate then is that what kind of we will become a superpower if things go well i mean you could still mess things up what kind of superpower should we be what kind of society should we be we have had such opportunities before we've messed up like one of the things that strikes me is often we have messed up because of internal divisions right when invaders came there's this there's this very nice line i heard in hindi ki bharat mein kila ka darwaza har dam andar se khula hai that we have lost because of internal divisions and we helped invaders they didn't have to defeat us sala we defeated ourselves okay uh 
we must not, and there are enough people who try and cause internal divisions on various issues, we must not give in to that. That is very critical. We'll miss our chance over the next 25 years. The second thing though is what kind of society should we be? Should we, like in the West, I've read uh, things in the West, I don't know how many of you are aware, many Western countries allowed their, they had excess vaccines, you know that, right? Yeah. And they allowed them to expire rather than help African countries. Yeah. Do you know that? Yeah, many of them. And all of them talk to us like they are morally superior, they have these, you know, these indices all these indexes that they will teach us Indians what morality is. They did this, they allowed Africans to die, allowed their vaccines to expire because they want to keep back up. Yeah. Where did Africa get their vaccines from? Us. We sent it, right? And I, this is one of the things I'm proud of. So these are issues that we should debate, that what kind of superpower will we be? Will we be helpful to others? Or will we end up being like many of these Western countries who talk a good game, but we all know what they actually do, right? Yeah. Uh, but should we also be strong enough to defend ourselves? Being nice doesn't mean that you allow enemies to road roll over you, right? Yeah. So among the things I speak of, uh, even in this book, well, Lord Ram, if, if there's an enemy who does something wrong, you will try and speak politely, okay? You've heard the Psalm Dam Dand Bhed, right? Chanakya, so Lord Ram's tried Psalm. It didn't work, dand. Okay, so if we will be polite, there are two neighbors of ours who tried to, uh, I'm a diplomat as well, so I'll be careful, I'll not name those neighbors. But we all know who they are. They need to learn that, yes, we will not attack first. But if you slap us, we'll not turn the other cheek, we'll freaking box you back. Okay, and that has to be our attitude. We will never send an army to conquer someone else. But you hit us, we will hit back, and we will hit back hard. We should be that kind of country, balance, where we are helpful to others, but also strong enough to defend ourselves. I saw the way you and, were beating the drums today. And really sorry, my boy Neil, he has a school night tomorrow. Neil, you gotta go, bro. Yeah, just, just take a break. Sorry. Okay. Sorry, he has a school night tomorrow. Bye, dude. Bye. Can we all say bye to him at least? Bye. Everyone say bye, Neil. Bye. bye Neil. You can go from here. Go from here, go from here. A car will take you back. Okay. Yeah, sorry. If anyone wants to come there, just, just come up. If anyone wants to sit. So I saw sorry. the way you were hitting onto the drums today and I saw the other side of you, which was the energetic, not holding a pen softly to a paper, though I'm <laughs> sure you type more than you write on the paper. But honestly, have you ever had a fight in your life? You look too sweet to be someone who's had a fight. I don't know why I say that, Me? but I just say that. No, no, I have fights. No, verbal fights maybe. I'm wrong, we were like a fist fight. I was a boxer, yeah. I have a slightly broken nose. It's an old boxing injury. Right. <laughs> but they also teach you to fight only if there's a reason to, so obviously. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If there's, if there's a good reason, yeah. And yeah. you would win a lot? Like you would? Uh, sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. Uh, that's the nature of a fight, right? Yeah. Who, who all have been in a fight before? Proper physical fight. It's that way, right? Sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. It doesn't matter whether you lose, you should hit hard. <laughs> you know the and have a good reason, just don't, don't go looking for a fight. The fight between Vashisht and Vishwamitra, I'm not going into that, but I'm just saying in life, when you have an opponent that angers you enough to reinvent the wheel and do something so that you can be a tough competition, has that ever happened to you that no, somebody... You should, you should compete, competing is good. It makes you stronger. It's good to have people who challenge you. Uh, but if you surrender to anger too often, then you've actually lost, right? So there may be 1% times when you actually have to be really aggressive, and those times you must be aggressive. You should not be a doormat. But 99% of the times I have learned a sweet word actually gets the job done, right? Uh, it's one of the things you can learn from Ravan in uh, War of Lanka. So, I'm assuming everyone would have read Ravan, Enemy of Aryavarta, right? Anyone who's not read it, show of hands. Shame on you. Okay, one person. Okay. Uh, but among the things that I think everyone will agree about Ravan, he was super talented, right? Yeah. He wasn't just a thug. Then he wouldn't be interesting. Yeah. Super talented, brilliantly intelligent, brilliant warrior, good trader, uh, many things, and uh, 
talented musician. He invented instruments, yeah. right? Uh, he had the blessings of Lord Shiva, man, uh, of the Mahadev. But he still, you know, he didn't achieve all that he could have achieved. Why? No control over his anger, no control over his ego, right? So that's among the things that one should learn from Ravan, that no matter how talented you are, if you cannot control your ego, if you cannot control your anger, you'll meet a sticky end. So it's in your own selfish interest to control your ego and anger. You're not doing a favor to anyone else. You're doing a favor to yourself by controlling your ego. But that doesn't mean that you become a doormat. At, in those 1% cases where you have to fight, then fight, fight hard, right? But 99% of the times, a sweet word actually gets the job done. I think that's, that's a learning. I would How say. many people have opposed your writing style? Because a lot of what you say, I'm assuming, is a lot of creative um, freedom that you exercise. How much of it? How much percentage? I've, I've been in the public space for 12 uh, years now. My books, uh, uh, Lord Shiva's Grace, they've sold quite well. Uh, have you, you can Google, have you ever heard any controversy around me? No. No, right? But that shocks me. But that's a point, right? In, in India, I'm telling you, uh, and I know you're from the media, don't take this the wrong way, but often controversies are created by artists in partnership with friends in the media. We all know that, right? Why? Because it's a very easy way to get publicity. No, but there are a lot of people right? who do take and, it personally saying that... And at sometimes is genuine controversy does happen. There are some times, right? Uh, among the things I have learned is that you can have a different truth. As long as you present it with respect, there is no controversy. Uh, in India, there's this lovely, uh, you know, Vedic line, Ekam Sat Vipra Bahuda Vadanti. Anyone has heard of that line? Ekam Sat Vipra Bahuda Vadanti? Yeah, what does it mean? Anyone wants to take a guess? Yeah. What does it mean? The, the gentleman backbencher, the youngster at the back. Just scream it out. Perfect. Applause for him. Woo! The, the truth is one, but the why speak it as many, right? This is, this is one of the central principles of the Indian way. And you intuitively learn it when actually you're living your life, right? So again, pop quiz, uh, who is elder, Lord Ganesh or Lord Karthik? How many will say Lord Karthik is elder? Yeah, okay, hands down. How many will say Lord Ganesh is elder? Yeah, you'll notice I raised my hands for both, right? Yeah. Okay. And I noticed they were different. I'm betting that everyone who said Lord Karthik is elder is probably a North Indian, Maharashtra upwards. Everyone who said Lord Ganesh is elder, elder is probably a South Indian, South of Maharashtra. Is Lord Ganesh a bachelor? How many will say yes? No, he isn't. No? No. Yeah? Just so few? Okay, but there are three saying out here. Yeah, in the, in the North, Lord Ganesh is, uh, Lord Karthik, sorry, is Lord Karthik, I meant, sorry, oh, okay. Lord Karthik. Is Lord Karthik a bachelor? I think so. Yeah? yeah? So many, which is why his name is Kumar, right? Yeah? So, in, no, in the North, it's believed Lord Karthik is a bachelor. Okay, South Indians out here, is Lord Karthik a bachelor or is he married? Married? R uh, show of hands? Yeah? Quite a few South Indians here. He has two wives, right? Valli ji and Sena ji now, which is the truth? It's up to you. And the same person can have different truths. In the north, we can, same person can go to the north and believe Lord Karthik is a bachelor, go to the south and worship him along with his two wives. We Indians, and this is just a small example, there are many examples like this. Is Lakshman Rekha there in the Ramayana? How many will say yes, show of hands? Ah. Okay, many people say Lakshman Rekha is there in the Ramayana. How many will say Lakshman Rekha is not there in the Ramayana? Okay, in the Valmiki applause, in the Valmiki Ramayana, there is no Lakshman Rekha, right? But in the Ram Charit Manas, some say in the Kriti Bhashi uh, Ramayana as well, which is the Bengali Ramayana, the Lakshman Rekha is mentioned. Not exactly like how the 1980s television serial was, but differently. What's the point I'm trying to make? There are so many multiple truths. We celebrate all of them. So in India, there is comfort with multiple truths as long as you speak it with respect. If you if you go looking for a controversy, say something disrespectful, yeah, tab to controversy hogi. Do it with respect, no controversy, and I'm the living proof of it. Ek aakhi sawaal aa raha hai, Sita aur Ravan ke beech ki baatein, jo is book mein hai. 
and you would have never interpreted it like that because we watched it on television several times it's always that of stern anger from her end and him trying to appeal to her and it's completely different it's literally like two long lost so called connected friends souls or whatever are sitting and chatting it's essentially a philosophical discussion right uh between goddess sita and ravan and kumbhakarna you know among our traditions in the indian way that among the best philosophical discussions are those who have completely opposing points of view something which we in modern india are forgetting because we are following western paradigms where we want everyone watches tv news at 9 pm yeah, yeah? Okay. i don't but you'll notice uh, usually i'm not there also in many of those debates i don't go you'll have people on two sides basically screaming at each other okay and you should go to some of those debates because once the tv camera is turned off you will be shocked to know both the people on both sides are actually very good friends okay <laughs> they'll go and have coffee together they'll go and have a drink together but in front of you they're doing a play of hating each other yeah. right but actually our best philosophical discussions the upanishads would show two clearly opposing guys discussing philosophies with each other in a polite way and that's when the best philosophies emerge so i thought it would be a good idea to show goddess sita and ravan discussing philosophies of what is a good society and that's how and i do that in the book yes you know uh, i know I, i have to end this discussion to open it out to you all but i have to say we're living in times where war is actually happening as we speak and it's a it's a terrible question to ask even but is war a good thing or a bad thing and that's what this book is going to make you question as well which is phenomenal in the way that when i read it i i can't say it justifies war but i don't know how i can't even oppose it you know what i'm saying and you would know yes uh, i think it was mao who said it i'm sorry to be quoting mao i know he killed millions of people but he did say some wise things i think it was mao who said that war is politics through other means and politics is war through other means right mm. so uh, so okay. politics can hopefully be war without any of the violence yeah. which is what politics is in a democracy and at times you have violence and then it becomes war to settle certain issues it's one of the ways in which humanity interacts it's sad but it's one of the ways and it's not just humanity which fights wars uh, among the greatest wars are how many how many believe that humanity is the most successful species on earth oh, no. yeah few anyone believes ants are actually the most successful oh, yeah. species on earth oh yeah yeah ants ants constitute 10% of the world's biomass far more than humanity far more than perhaps even mammals right uh and ants have tremendous wars it's it's a very well organized community right they'll have specialization for soldiers workers uh ants unlike humanity the chief is is female actually uh in yeah. among ants uh, one good reason for the women to like ants i guess <laughs> um uh, and they have specialization and ants have massive wars with each other different ants colonies sometimes they drag out over generations right just so it's not just humanity which does it Once others again. do it too when we read your book we see what a great geography sense of geography direction you have of course your knowledge base then your mathematics because you've been a banker was there any subject you were not good at in school i hate this guy tell us honestly uh ma kuch kami reh gayi oh she says no and on that note i open the discussion to you i have 600 more questions but i will stop please ask yours and i hope yours have my questions in them i see a hand going up from the girl in the spectacles hi yeah. hi hi so what's your name darling tanvi tanvi and where are you are you from close by or where gorega okay <laughs> thanks okay. for the trek Come. so we've seen that india has a long tradition of retelling mythological stories why are we drawn towards it and why do we retell it again and again what's your point of view oh lovely answer, question wow. uh tanvi applause for it. yeah um yeah you know we are the only pre bronze age culture that is still alive this is one of the things i've said often right many other uh, ancient pre bronze age matlab minimum 5000 years old right 
uh, China is not 5,000 years old. It's Chinese cultures, maybe three and a half, four thousand years old, right? Which were the other cultures that started as uh, uh, at the same time as us? Greece? Egypt, which was Chem, Mycenae, which led to Greece later, uh, Mesopotamia. All of them are dead. They are museum pieces. We are still around. We are still here. We still chant hymns that were composed 7,000, 8,000 years ago. Uh, I don't know how many of you are Shaivites, know the Sri Rudram or the Tandav Totra. They were composed thousands of, of years ago, right? Uh, uh, same with Vishnu Sahasranam or Shakti. These are ancient hymns. Our stories are so ancient. I think part of the reason we are alive is we never get bored of listening to our stories again and again and again and again. Right? The only thing is we want to hear different interpretations of it. Like the soul is old, but we want to see a different body around it. Right? Uh, and this is the way we've been, I, I gave various examples like, you know, the Lakshman Rekha is not there in the original one. But there are various stories like this, right? Everyone has heard of Kalidasa, yeah. Yeah? the great ancient Sanskrit. We believe that he was the greatest Sanskrit uh, playwright ever, right? Who did Kalidas believe was the greatest Sanskrit playwright ever? In one of his plays, he actually mentioned his name. Anyone knows? Bhasa. Okay. According to Kalidas himself and various other Sanskrit playwrights, the greatest Sanskrit playwright ever was Bhasa. Okay. Bhasa wrote plays which are complete different interpretations of our stories. So he wrote a play called Pancharatra, okay, which is based on the Mahabharata where Dronacharya essentially does a peace treaty between the Kauravas and the Pandavas. Okay. There was and no he, war? Yeah, there was no war. Okay. And Bhasa wrote this play. Okay. There are various plays like this. And this is, I'm talking, Bhasa would be 2,000, two and a half thousand years ago. And this is just one example. There are so many examples like this, right? So it's, I'd love to understand why we are so attached to our stories. Uh, but I think that is the reason why we are still alive as a culture. And our love is in, in many ways a liberal love, right? Because love can be very controlling also, right? That sometimes it happens, right? How many have a girlfriend or boyfriend and you want to control their lives? Anyone has that? Yeah, that my girlfriend should always do what I tell her to do. Amish, look at oh you my. digging for this kind of gossip. I see it. No, no, no. But, but liberalism means that someone I love should have the freedom to change a bit. It's okay. I will still love them. So many cultures become that way about their stories as well. That I want to hear the stories the way I want to hear them. No one else should change it. Whereas our love for the stories is a liberal love. That yes, I've heard this this way. I'm very happy to hear a different interpretation. Because I'm exploring the God, I, God and Goddess I love in a completely different way. I think the fact that we have a liberal love is what has kept our culture alive because our stories keep adapting to different times. You see, our ancient times, women were very powerful uh, in those roles. Then there came a time when we suffered a lot of invasions, a lot of random violence. You'll find that societies which suffer random violence tend to become patriarchal. The level of women tends to go down. So you find that happened in many of our stories. 400, 500, 600 years ago. Now you find as we become peaceful, once again, we haven't faced any major invasions for the last 70 years, or if anyone has tried, we've beaten them back. So now you'll find that the feminist interpretations are coming back once again, right? Some of them my books, some of them various other books, right? So think about it, our stories have changed. It's a liberal love that we have, so we are willing to adapt. Can I, can I answer that too? Okay, so here's my thing. When we watch Spider-Man and Superman, we can't tire of it and all our kids want to watch more of it, no matter how many hundreds of them you give it to them. These are our real heroes for crying out loud. Can we please clap for the fact that he's reviving that? And sorry to butt in, but Marvel seems to be taking this thing forward that they've got the superheroes. Hanuman, hamare aunt, wo pehle. Hanuman came before Superman and Spider-Man and whatever. Do you feel that's reviving our culture as well. That's why you want to make sure you make a movie, which yeah, I know so you are. We are working on converting Suhail Dev into a movie and Shiva Trilogy and Ram Chandra series also. Uh, so I hope you guys will like it when it comes. <laughs> Suhail Dev, we are producing ourselves actually. We've got Viacom as a studio partner and we're working on it. We'll talk about my role later. Who is next? 
The guy in the shirt there, yeah. Hi. Hi. What's uh, your hi. name? My name is Devru Padar. Hi. Uh, thank you for your books, firstly. Thanks, bye. Um, I have two questions. So, uh, all of us have been exposed to these great epics in our lives, mostly through our parents and grandparents. But I think despite the various versions of these stories, they're left on the table on, by the bedside. There are the many learnings that are common to the different interpretations of these epics are not often imparted to the generation as a whole. Do you think, would you be a proponent of some learnings from these epic stories uh, passed on to formally into an education system? That's my first question. And secondly, since you ventured into Ram Chandra series and you ventured into the Shiva trilogy, any scope of uh, Mahabharat in the future? Yes. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, yes is the answer to both the questions. Uh, I, there are, you know, in fact, and that's what Didi and I uh, have worked on, uh, Bhavna Didi and I, my sister out there. Uh, and uh, Dharma is actually a book to distill uh, the philosophies, the learnings from the stories, you know, into a non-fiction book. And we'll do various more stories like this. There is uh, another book we are uh, working on. Uh, Harper will be publishing it uh, soon. Uh, I have requested them, but regretfully they are not willing to offer that book free of cost to all readers as well. They are too profit focused here. So, uh, so that will also be on sale. But we are working on a book on Murti Puja, on the beauty of idol worshipping and why this tradition has survived and why it leads to intuitive liberalism. And these are discussions I have had in the stories, but we are converting it into non-fiction uh, books with learnings. Super and yes, questions. Mahabharat, I'm working on. That'll come. Thank you. One last question. Uh, the gentleman here, very excited in, again, Out here. in white t-shirt. Hi, buddy. What's your name? Uh, Tanmay. Hi, Tanmay. Uh, good evening, sir. I just wanted to, you know, let, uh, let you know that uh, countries like Egypt, Greece, they are famous for tourism. Why? Because they have projected their ancient culture very well. So I know you're in touch with many government officials. So could you please request them to, you know, love this question ancient already. India's uh, culture so that our uh, tourism triples. Very so good. One more thing I have, uh, most of them don't know, in Madhya Pradesh there's some Bhimkun, which is a mysterious lake. Then, you know, the Kedarna, uh, sorry, the Jyotlinga temples are in one straight line. Elora caves are made on one rock. So could you request the government to please, uh, you know, spread awareness to the world that come to India before going to Europe? Very impressive. He knows his stuff. There are many other things like this that, you know, there's a Kailasna temple right in our state, in Maharashtra, a temple that has been carved down from a cliff. Okay. It is, it is bigger than the Taj Mahal and they haven't built it up. They actually carved it into a cliff. So if you make one mistake, the entire project is gone. And they built it over 100 years, matlab over four generations. The guy who started and designed the temple knew that he would die before the temple would be complete. We can't hand over, you know, on jobs over three years. There they handed over the designs over four generations. And it came up. We have really awesome stuff like this. But yes, we don't get enough as many tourists as we should. Uh, two reasons. One, of course, we have to talk and advertise a lot more, which has started. The second thing is to build up enough infrastructure, which, you know, which, yes, some Im uh, improvements are happening, but as we get more money, it will improve even more. But the third thing is in our hands, okay? So, uh, we have the largest brand ambassador base in the world. There are 1.4 billion of us, right? So, every single one of us should talk about our culture. When we go abroad, when we meet any foreigner, talk about our culture and see ourselves as ambassadors for our culture. When we go abroad, we must we must behave well. We mustn't, you know, uh, eat something and go, I'm just suggesting, abroad. We must try and attract them to India and speak of our culture. We are the ambassadors for our culture. That so is in our hands. The other things, yes, the government should One do. last request. I belong to the Saraswat community, which is an ancient culture, which most of them don't know. Could you write a book on our community? Oh my which God. community? Saraswat community. From oh, the wow. Saraswat. You're a Saraswat? Yes. Wow, okay. We are Saraswat Konkanis now. Wow, yes. Saraswats are those who are originally from the Saraswati uh, uh, Delta. So, Pango yes, guys, we will write. I will check something on that too. Namaste. Nice meeting you. I will figure something out. Thank you so much.
Uh, there are lots more questions, but okay, we'll take one last one, okay, and then okay. I'm sorry, we have to, I have to start doing signing. The brick red T-shirt, right in the center of this crowd. Can yes. you take the mic? Uh, good evening, sir. First of all, thank you for all your uh, books and it thank has you. been a great inspiration to all of us. Second, my question is, uh, you have uh, taken us on a journey of the Indian mythology which nobody has uh, presented us and I want to be a part of this journey and distribute it further but I don't know, there are, I think there are many students and uh, people like me who would love to take on and carry on these values and give these it to... brand ambassadors of Amish Tripathi, mm, you mean? Not <laughs> really only Amish, but of Indian mythology. So, is there any project where we can volunteer and be a part of the community? He's because we all not are great writers, okay, so we cannot let be... Me, let me think, very good idea. Yeah, Things which, nice. which students can do. There is an IM an uh, organization, some people from... I am, you and I here, right? Rishabh? Is yeah. Rishabh here? So just join. It's a fantastic organization, a youth organization. Uh, join them. They, uh, they uh, promote our values, promote our culture. And they're very cool uh, people as well. And actually, our ancient culture is actually quite cool. Uh, and liberal and open-minded. So you might want to join this organization. Check it out. And I'll think of some, uh, some ideas and thoughts as well. So please okay. do let us know. We would be very Thank excited. You. Thank you. Well, with that, I just want to say that we owe a lot to this man beyond just being affable, being open, being discussion-wise, so free-flowing and beautiful. Uh, we owe him our culture, and that's a big O. So I think what we ask is, please read the book. It's The War of Lanka. I have managed to skate through 70%, uh, and it's taken me on a journey of all emotions. And I must tell you, don't mean to sound rude, but a lot of the movies off late have not managed to take me su through such a journey. Your books are as visual as they are on paper. Love you, Amish. Thank you so much for inspiring each and every one across age groups. Amish Tripathi, everyone, can you please stand up and pay our love and respect? And I want my picture with you, so we'll hold on. Since everybody is standing up, should we do a picture with everybody? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, all right. Okay. We're gonna do a massive selfie, okay? All right. We're gonna do. We're gonna do two things. All right. We're gonna do two things. One, we're gonna do a selfie, and second, we're gonna do a War of Lanka chant. Yeah. All right. All right. So hold on. We're gonna do. We're gonna do photograph first. Huh? Woo! Okay. Yeah, well, I'll do it. Okay, if you've, if you've got your books, hold your books up as well, all right? Uh, we should know which one, which show we came from. All right? All right, it's a selfie time. One, two, three, smiles, please. Everybody scream, War of Lanka! Photograph me, Nia, Egana. Now, 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 now is where you'd give your beautiful voice the meaning it needs. All right. The war of Lanka! The war of Lanka! Bye. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please put a big round of applause for RJ Archana on stage for her lovely, lovely questions. Thank you. The ever so gorgeous. Thank you so much. Requesting everybody to please, uh, those who have your tokens, please get in single file line from this side over here. Only people with tokens are allowed. Those who want your book signed, those who want your book signed, token numbers from... Token numbers from 1 to 25. Can I have token numbers 1 to 25 in the front line over here, please? Token numbers Hello. 1 to 25. Letting you know, so if you want your book to be signed, please purchase your book. Get, uh, please retain your receipt and collect your token from any of the crossword employees here. Also letting you know that this event, if you'd like to go back to the questions and answers, this event was live streamed on YouTube.
Facebook, Twitter and Instagram on the handle author Amish. This event was streamed on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram and Twitter on the handle author Amish, hashtag War of Lanka. Guys, kindly form the queue for the token numbers 1 to 25. It's a, it's a delight to be here at uh, Crossword. Uh, I, I've been told it's the 30th anniversary of Crossword. Thank you so much for all your support. Every single book of mine has been launched at Crossword Kemp's Corner. I'm almost superstitious uh, about it now. From my first book, Immortals of Melua. Thank you for all uh, the love and support, Crossword, and wish you uh, all strength and power as you go towards the next 30 years. Take care. Bye. Yeah, you're only. Congratulations. Dio. Dio. One mobile is yours. One mobile is yours. We'll take this one. Yeah. Hello. Open up to this page for time.